Hey guys, how's it going? So today Aaron and I are actually going to tackle a few things up in the front yard. I'm going to go grab all the tools. He had some things to finish up inside, but we want to do some perennial cutback like my hollyhocks are pretty much done blooming and I really want to get them cut down before they spread their seed everywhere. And then we've got some fire blight to cut out of the crab apple and I'm going to put some gopher repellent down and then there's probably some other things we'll take care of at that point as well. I do want to check to see if the chickens have laid any eggs though. Hey girls, you having yourself a little dust bath in there? You guys have any eggs for me today? You have any eggs? <laughs> yeah, you guys are very sweet. They don't use their nesting boxes to lay eggs. They lay their eggs over here on my supply shelf. Oh well, two today. I think it's probably you two. Good job, girls. Good job. Your sisters need to kick it in. I absolutely love having chickens. It has been the best thing that we added to our garden, I think, thus far. And we've been eating the eggs every single day. I'm gonna take these eggs inside, but things are looking really pretty out here right now. Look at the Munstead Lavender Hedge and the incredible hydrangeas, ridiculous coleus, and then my mix of supertunias down there. Just beautiful. It helps that it's overcast as well. Okay, so it looks like I have some garbage to take care of. This is our catch-all right here. The trailer in the barn is kind of like our giant trash can. I know we will need pruners. Probably this pair as well. This pair right here, what are they called? This is a power gear bypass lopper. Cuts big branches super easily. Pull pruner kangaroo bag, gloves maybe, and this right here. This is what I'm gonna spread to repel gophers because I'm having an issue right now. And the last thing that I need and I can't find are my pruners. I can never find my pruners. Where would I have put them? In the bin labeled pruners? No, of course not. It kind of makes me nervous. I hope I didn't throw them away on accident. Oh, there they are. Used them by the onions last. So here we are at the first patch of hollyhocks. I do have two. This one's a little bit bigger than the other one. Um, and you can see that there are a few flowers left. Really pretty. These are like pink, pale yellow, and white. Kind of a blend over here. But most of them look like this one right here where there's really not a whole lot left. They may have a few more flowers open up right at the ends, but I am going to cut them back at this point because if you take a look at some of the spent flowers to see, you can see the seed pods there. Each one of those has like, I don't even know how many seeds, but a ton. And if I don't get these cut back and they release their seeds, I will have hollyhocks everywhere, everywhere. So I just find it better just to cut them back at this stage. Plus they're starting to look not as good. And there's also some nice, great, big, tall weeds in here. Look at that. That is a super tall weed. But before I get into that, I want you to take a look behind me. Look at how gorgeous our hay racks are right now. I mean, I just can't even believe that it looks like this. And we're on the back side. Um, and that was one of the things I was really hoping this year by choosing some of the Supertunia Vistas that we'd have enormous growth on both sides of the fence. And we sure have. Let me give you a closer look. Look at this, Supertunia Bubblegum, Supertunia Vista Silverberry. And just kind of like pop over the front side here, you can kind of see what they're looking like, but absolutely glorious. Once a week fertilizer, they get drip irrigation right now for 15 minutes twice a day because we are in the mid 90s still. And this spot right here, I'm actually really thrilled with how it's looking. You can see that it's a tiny bit more sparse, but this, like the first four hay racks went through kind of a really um, I don't know, kind of a bad phase. They were getting really wind blown. I don't know how these four get it worse than these. I mean, maybe the wind comes straight this way, but they were so like, they were folded over forward. I had to come out and fold them back over a few times, but they've rebounded beautifully. And I've also got some squash over here. This is gonna be like a show and tell video. I'm so excited about some of this stuff. So over here on the west side, I planted some sun credible sunflowers, which will be available next year. And aren't they gorgeous? can't remember how many are in this space, but not that many. Um, I also planted some blue Hubbard squash, which if you look over here, look at this. 
Oh, so exciting. I love it. There's some more forming in here and they trail out underneath the fence and go into the pasture and there are some other fruit out there. I've got some other ones too. Like I started these You can see this vine is quite a bit smaller. I started these hmm, July the 1st, I believe. So I may not get any fruit off of them. I mean, maybe some small ones you can see like a small one forming. This variety is called North Falkland Island Squash. And some of them are bigger, like that one I started July 1st. Same for this one, I don't know what the difference is. I have three King Tuts in here. The elderberries we planted earlier are doing great. And then there are some other squash. Look how tiny those are compared to like this one. It was planted on the same day, like what gives? Pots are looking good though. <laughs> I'm totally avoiding work right now, can you tell? So is Aaron, where is he at? He said, I'll be right out. I just have to finish something up. Mm hmm. I think he knows. He knows what chores are looking at him right now. So we decided to troubleshoot the sprinklers real quick because you can see right here, this spot on the lawn is looking kind of dry and it's getting hit twice or should be like by this sprinkler right here. And then also by this one, but we just figured out that it can't hit this grass. Like, um, whoo, I'm going to get hit by the water. Hold on. Anyway, it's having a hard time getting hit by this sprinkler because the gomfrina is too tall and it's blocking the water. So that's something to think about for next year, isn't it? Yeah, something that has less height or I might need to move the sprinkler. Well, I could do something shorter. It's less work. Also, this gomfrina has grown like a beast up here. I mean, it is just huge. And in the bed right behind me, I've got it planted around some atlas roses and it has just like taken over and it loves it up here but it is stinky. Yeah, it kind of is. <laughs> like, I didn't know that about this plant. I, I suppose if you just had like a couple in a container or even like a drift of five or 10 in a flower bed, you probably wouldn't notice the smell, but I have them really thick up here and it's right by our entryway. Something to think about. Gomfrina, 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 big time Gomfrina. Stinky. Yeah, a little bit. So we decided to tackle the fire blight in this crab apple first, which is something that we've been battling since we moved in really. Every year it's actually gotten a little bit better. So I'm hoping that we eventually get it uh, under control. So see that right there, there's some brown and then there are a few branches right up in here. Last year it was way thicker than this is now, but we are planning on um, having the grass mowed tomorrow. So it's always nice to do kind of these messier jobs the day before so that you can mow the mess up real quick. And a quick word about fire blight. I did talk about it more extensively in another video. I think it was another vlog actually. I will try to find it and link it down below, but it's something that spreads in the spring um, when the tree is in bloom. And if you have a really wet spring, it's even worse. Um, so you can spray it at that time. I completely forgot to spray it. Obviously that would help, but getting it pruned out and cleaning up your trees on an annual at least basis also helps. Um, so that's what we are doing today. So I. Um, we'll make sure that after we're done pruning, all of the pruning equipment will be cleaned very thoroughly with a like a bleach solution. You can use like a Lysol spray so that we don't spread it anywhere else. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and tackle this tree right now. Ooh, I spot something orange and soft. Kitty, kitty, Russell. Hey buddy, what are you doing? Good boy. There's the massive pile of branches. Everything looks so much better and we can walk under it comfortably. And then, like I said, we'll come through and clean up the grass with the mower. But this is actually the area where I want to use the gopher repellent, that Molmax, um, because I keep getting gophers here. I don't know what the deal is. It's like 
this little island right in the middle of grass and they always come to this spot. You can see an old mound right here. I just had, this was the freshest mound right here and I just uh, broke that mound down. And then there was one more right over here. Yep. See that? Just totally wrecked some impatience and geraniums right there. So I'm gonna sprinkle that stuff really thick in this whole area. It's supposed to penetrate really far down in the soil. Aaron, do you have that? Yeah, this is a four day method. Did you see this? I didn't. Yeah, check this out. Four day method. So I guess I, this is for lawns. Well, this is kind of lawn, isn't it? I mean, it's like in the middle of lawn. Yeah, but they're not coming up through the lawn. They're coming up in the flower beds. I don't know if that matters. So for lawns, you're supposed to do like a gradual four day spreading kind of schedule or maybe you like yeah you spread it right around the affected area unaffected unaffected area is day unaffected one affected area affected affected huh you i guess you try to move them out because this doesn't kill them i think this is a repellent right well whatever works to so keep them away. i think what this is kind of saying is that if you just rep Pell them here, it's going to move them out somewhere else, which is fine, I guess, but... So basically, we just need to have an airplane come and drop Mole Max on our entire I think, property. I think what they're trying to say with this is that you actually need to spread it in the whole area here uh -huh. and create a way for them to get out. Okay. So spread it in the lawn, like in a, a concave around your affected area. Uh-huh. So that way, because we want them to go back toward the, the pasture. The pasture. Uh -huh. That's the okay. goal, right? Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. So do you just I sprinkle haven't opened, it? I haven't opened it yet. Is there a lid thing no. under it? Or is it open? It's open. Oh, what does it look like? Active is castor oil. Mm, can I even see that in there? Yeah. Like this? I think so. Looking good. Oh, I smell it. Yeah. So you left an opening right in here. I left an opening for them to go this direction. So then tomorrow, do we like do more into this yeah, flower bed then and do then the more, affected area more? And gotcha. work your way that direction. Perfect. So, but we got to water this in, which I'll just turn the sprinklers on. Okay. And that'll water the whole thing. In fact, they'll come on in like an hour or two. I'll just okay. let them do their thing. Perfect. So I think since we're up here already with all of our tools, this is my second patch of hollyhocks. Skipped the first one. We'll just go ahead and take care of this one. Um, and I'm gonna just cut them all the way back down to the ground and they have enough time to flush and kind of turn into little nice mounds, um, but they won't get this tall again, which is totally fine. They're looking a little mangy, starting to fall over in the wind. That looks a lot better. Next area is right here. I just have a few that popped up and I kind of want to remove everything from here to here. I've got a couple of coleus in there um, because I've got some Veronica that I think would be really pretty to plant in this area. That's better. So I will dig out this hollyhock and that one right there when I come in with my Veronica because I did not bring a shovel out here, but at least the area is cleaned and prepped and ready to roll. just came across a black widow. That's scary. Well, that looks a whole bunch better. So much more clean. I do need to come in here probably with some mulch at some point and kind of build up the mulch in this area. I just did a really thin layer because we had um, redone all of the drip tubing. And so I had to do the whole the flower bed and it took a lot of bags. So I decided not to do it super thick and I'm kind of paying for it a little bit. Um, and I did notice two, no, three more gopher mounts. There's one right here and two right over here. One there and one there, which is not amazing. So I'm gonna apply more of that 
um, repellent probably toward the exterior of the flower bed and kind of push them this way because the goal is to get them to go out into the pasture. So the hollyhocks will bounce a little bit, like they will reflush and they'll probably get two or three feet tall by the end of the season and they'll just be nice little green mounds, um, which I'll cut back either this fall or next spring. So there's only really a short period of time where they're all cut back like that and the flower beds look a little bit bare, but it sure beats having to pull up a ton of hollyhock seedlings. Now, I tried to cut those back as carefully as possible. You may have noticed I was cutting just the tops off that had all of the seed pods and placing those in the trailer or on the tarp. Um, and then I went in and cut all the bases off because when you go in and cut the base off when the top is still attached, that top like moves around like crazy and just spreads seed everywhere. Um, and so I, I think I did spread a little bit, but it was a very minimal amount of seed. I had fully intended on planting the Veronica in the space I cleared the hollyhocks out of along the boxwood hedge but it actually took us uh, quite a bit longer to get this job done, these two jobs anyway. Um, and so I'm gonna go start dinner. That's all I'm gonna do today in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I mean, it just kind of shows some of the things that I'm doing right now in the garden. Um, and there's quite a bit more really that I need to be doing. Like I hope that they keep on doing that throughout the rest of the season because I actually feel like I'm on top of the weeds, not on top of the, the uh, grooming and cutting back. I never really have, uh, am on top of that. It's just kind of the way it goes, but the weeds are pretty good right now. so. That's a win, I guess. Anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out and watching this video today, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.